This is just a quick introduction before the PD starts. Um, this PD is what we call a founder-led PD. I have recorded it so you can host it in your classroom. What you need to do to host this is you need a big screen or some device to show the video on and a speaker, and I will lead all of you and your colleagues through this PD. Uh, the PD uh, video is about 30 minutes long, but I recommend 45 minutes to an hour for the PD because I have three uh, places throughout the video where I stop and open up for you to do activities I have prepared. And they will take some time as well. And I really recommend uh, setting aside time for that. Um, other than that, I will lead you through everything and I'll just pause here and then in a few seconds, the real PD will start. So good luck, everyone. My name is Eric. I'm one of the co-founders of CuriPod, and I'm super happy to be hosting this PD session with y'all. Thank you so much to, I'm pointing to my left here, but you might be standing there, so thank you as well for hosting uh, this PD session together with me. Uh, the idea of this PD session is that I will show you CuriPod and go through how you can use it for start prep, and I will give you some interactive activities you can work on, uh, and I really hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. Um, to start off my PDs, I usually tell the story of how Curipod ended up where we are today. So Curipod is from Norway. Um, I usually tell my own, like my own story usually started with me growing up. I usually say I was born with a Hermione reflex, which means that if uh, you've probably seen it in your classroom, if someone asks a question, my hand tends to do this. It's an involuntarily reflex. And I just loved school so much. I had a great time in school. And uh, after school, I got a scholarship to move to Mozambique, uh, where I worked as a teacher. And after a while, I got back to Norway, where I started to study economics. And my first year in university, I met this guy called Jens. And spoiler alert, if you haven't met him, he is the CEO of Curipod. I'm very happy I met him. Uh, but he was one of the smartest people I've ever met. So we started working together in everything in uni. And at the end of working very closely with Jens for three years, I learned that he had originally dropped out of high school, uh, which came as a big surprise to me because uh, I never reflected on why people drop out and I never met anyone that dropped out. And I never understood why quote unquote smart people would drop out. So me and Jens had a lot of conversations about education and we figured we both had a very strong passion for it. So we started Curipod. and. There were a lot of different things that prompted us to start Curipod. Um, Curipod came from um, our own experiences with the education system. We really wanted something that made the classes engaging both for a student like me and a student like Jens. Um, we started it during COVID, and I think one of the trends that happened during COVID was that more and more edtech tools built this self-paced, student-paced versions, which was very natural, right? Because we were in lockdown, but what scared us a bit with that was that this then continued in the classrooms. And suddenly you had classes where students were just sitting and interacting with their screens, the whole classes. And we really understood it because it solved this really hard problem of individualizing and um, creating really custom experiences for every student. But it also took away that whole classroom mentality. And we, highly believe that the most important skills students learn are the skills uh, that they learn together as a group, as a group of teachers with uh, students with a teacher, like creativity, critical thinking, all of this. So uh, the premise for Curipod was that we will not build self-paced, we will build classroom-paced. The idea is to bring the classroom together. The idea is that five minutes in a Curipod activity should give you 10 minutes of in-classroom discussion. Curipod is only there to spark curiosity, to spark the discussion. That was the first part. And then we have also been building a lot for AI. And how we've been thinking about AI is that we highly believe we can use it to support educators. Uh, we can use it to help you uh, get fee give feedback faster, to customize your lessons. But at the end of the day, no one wakes up uh, in the morning with that feeling, oh my God, I'm not using enough AI. That's not a problem anyone has. The problem you have is I have 25 students and I would like to practice 
uh, SDRs in Star, but it takes me a week to grade all of their feedback. Well, that's something we can help with. But at the end of the day, it's about just supporting the teacher in the classroom. Um, so you will also see that CurePod is not building any chatbots. Um, we truly believe, again, bringing the classroom together and not putting kind of every student alone with their chatbots. That's, that's where we want to build. We want to build something that is for the classroom. Um, so without further ado, I want to get into what I'll show you today, a lesson I wanted to show you. And of, I will, of course, as we go on, show you how to build this lesson to yourself very easily. But I really wanted you to understand kind of how will the student experience this lesson before we dig into that. So we're inside Curapod, and Curapod is an interactive presentation tool. So think in the family of Nearpod Peer Deck. That's kind of where we are now. I have built my lesson, and I'm ready to start it. To start it, I'll click present. And since I said it was interactive, so I need some students to join. So what I'll do is I'll click here to open the join lobby. And then the students can go to curie.live and enter this pin code, or you can just copy this link and send them to them. So I will now open another tab where I am the student. And I will enter my name here. And we are ready to go. So I'll go back to the teacher screen. I will be switching a bit between those. As you see, all students get a randomized nickname. This is to lower your threshold of engaging. You can see the real name in the moderation tool. I will show you after a little while. So I made a short constructed response reading fiction prep. Uh, and I put in a standard I wanted it to cover. And then I also put in the topic Taylor Swift, because that's what my students asked me for. And I'll, of course, show you how I made this, but I just wanted you to experience the lesson. We get some information about this lesson, and then we get to teach the students on how to build a good SDR. And then we get the text for the students to read. So this is about the topic, Taylor Swift. So again, this is how we try to make it blind with the students' interests. And then we have some activities here. The first one is a drawing activity. This is a warm up. What was something interested you notice in the text? So. If I'll start this one and move over to the student screen here, I see I get a drawing canvas. If I click on the slides, as a student, I can navigate back to that text I was supposed to be reading. Notice that the students cannot navigate further along the slides than the teacher. They can only uh, navigate backwards. So I can try to draw something I noticed while reading this text. So I have very poor drawing skills but maybe i'll try to draw someone playing a guitar and then i'll submit it and the teacher i'll go back to the teacher screen can now stop this, and then the students get to vote for the best drawing i'll do my own and i will and i'll move back to the teacher screen here and, and this activity is not made to practice start writing this is just one of our warm-up activities that starts with kind of realize like showing the students how they can pick out something they read in the text and conceptualize it and we have some other warm-up activities here i won't do all of them what questions could be asked based on the text this question helps the students start thinking like in the start pattern like what do you expect to be asked about when you read this text um and then so we get some more warm-up questions and then we come to slide eight here we're on the most important one so this is the ai feedback activity what evidence suggests taylor's dream was more than fame so i will start this now so here i'm ready to start it as a teacher i will start it there and let's move over to the student screen now i get to write so the first thing i would do as a student is i'll move back to the text so I can read here that Taylor didn't just want to perform, she wanted to touch people's hearts with her song. So I can start with something like, Taylor did not just want to perform, she wanted to move people with the music she wrote. And then I read here that while other kids played outside, Taylor practiced on her courts and perfected her voice. So I can write something like, 
this is evidenced by how she prioritized practicing her vocals and instruments over playing as a child. And I would probably go on for a while here, but I'll submit this shorter version of the answer and we'll move back to the teacher screen. So when everyone is finished, I can stop this here. And now as a teacher, I can click give feedback. What happens now is that all my students get feedback and now I only have one student here. I can open it from the teacher device here or we can move over to the student device again and see the feedback. So I got one point. Uh, I get feedback on my content, my evidence, my organization and my language and tips on how to improve for my next attempt. Let's look at the feedback here. I'll move back to the teacher screen and we can navigate to the next activity. Uh, and this is a word cloud where they get to think about what they will do different next time. Uh, and then you can also do the, like have more AI feedback activities here. So you get to retry what you just did. When you retry it, the students can always go back here to the response and they can copy out what they did or the feedback. So it's very easy for them to bring that on in the activity. So that was a short introduction to how the STAR uh, lessons in Curable work. And I think the concept I wanted to take away here is that we had the lesson that was interesting and it helped teaching the students how to write the STAR. Then it also gave them instant feedback. And this feedback, it only took a second to generate, which means that you could practice SCRs or ECRs over and over again, which is kind of the idea behind what we made here. So. Before we do any activities together, I wanted to show you how I built this. So I'll go to the home page of CuriPod and I'll click on Star Prep. And here we can take a look at all the different star lessons types we have. So you can read down here for RLA, we have revision and editing prep, CR information model compensation. You can look at all of the different ones here. Uh, we have a special one for RLA Spanish uh, where we generated in Spanish as well. We have one for social studies wrong for math, uh, but we can try to build one of these here. So let's try with an SDR reading prep nonfiction. So again, I mentioned earlier that these lessons are built by curriculum designers, but we can customize them with AI. So to customize this lesson, this is also why you get an infinite number of star prep because all of these customizable lessons can generate millions of variations based on your input. So again, I'll open the SCR reading prep nonfiction, and then I'll get this at my grade level. And then I can input a standard I want them to practice on. So the reading or writing standard, and then I can enter a topic. So this topic could for it be two different things. It could be a student interest like super old, like this was what I did with the previous one. I put in Taylor Swift, but you can also use a standard from, for instance, social studies or science, if you want some cross-curricular practice here. So you can enter some kind of science standard you're working on now and have a topic of the lesson tailored to that. And when you have done your customization, click Customize Now. CuriPod has now built your lesson. And you can look through it here. You can go directly to present or you can edit it. If we go into edit mode, we get, go into the slide creator here and we can look through it, we can read it before we start, we can go over everything here. Uh, we can edit it and yeah, you're ready to go. So with this, I'm going to give you your first practice assignment. So you can pause me after I give the assignment, but what I want to do is I want you all to log in to CuriPod and I want you to uh, try to build your own start prep lesson. And then I want you to sit together in groups uh, and test the lesson. So actually one of you present it and the rest of you join from either your phone or your computer and you go through, you don't need to do all the activities if you want to, but make sure you do the AI feedback activities uh, to practice kind of generating the feedback and see how this works. Um, before you do that, it's important to know that there is a chat icon here. Uh, 
here you can click send us messages and all of the team in Curable takes turn answering in this. So we're open all US business hours. So if you have any questions as you go, just write there and one of us, like we're 10 in the company, one of us, probably me, will pick it up as fast as possible and get back to you. So I hope you see you live uh, even after I've recorded this. Uh, so yeah, the split in, uh, start building, log in, try to build the start prep lesson. You do it by, well, you go to the home page, you click start prep, you build one of these lessons, and then in groups, you test it by presenting it like I did and joining. Um, so I'm thinking around 10, 15 minutes for that. Uh, so you can just pause me and continue when you're done. Okay, let's continue. So now you have tried to build your own lesson and you've hosted it and I hope you got some good feedback and you've practiced it. So now I'll show you a few other things in Curipod that is worth uh, knowing. So first I'll show you that there are other customizable lessons in Curipod. You can access them, you can search here, you can filter on grades. I really recommend giving our quick writes a try. So let's take this one, for example, leaving Earth, dimensional writing, uh, and base camp success. So this one is a quick write and it's about creating this immersive experience for the students to write more. So with this one, uh, we create a story where the students um, embark upon a mission from NASA and they're leaving Earth and you can customize it by customize what type of planet they will go to. And then they will have different writing assignments where they write back to NASA and, and inform about what they're learning. And again, all of these quick writes, uh, they're not star prep, but they're made to make writing incredibly immersive. And we give feedback with rubrics that are TEKS aligned. So I really recommend giving some of our quick writes a try. The other thing I really wanted to show you was some of our uh, classroom management features. And after that, I'll show you how to use Curable with bilingual learners. So if I'll go to my lessons, I can find the lesson I just built. So here we have this lesson and I'll present it again and I'll show you a few features I would like to show you. So to test those, again, I need to join with a student. So I'll open another tab here and I'll join. So let's see some of these classroom management features. So the first one I wanted to show you is the moderation tool. So if I'll start the activity here, I can click open moderate. And this will open the moderation on my own device. So here I get the moderation tool. And I'll of course show you how this works. If I now move over to my student device, I can start drawing. Move back to my teacher device, open the moderation tool. And you see here, I can see all my students with their real names drawings. So this is of course for you to moderate. Uh, you can move over to the students to give them some pointers. And if there's anything inappropriate, you're able to dismiss it. Now, if you're not able to open the moderation screen on your own screen, because you don't want to share it with your students, you can also click cannot moderate on this device. Then you get the option either to scan this QR code to moderate from a phone or an iPad, or you can click on this link and send this to another device and open the moderation tool through that. So that is an activity it is nice to know about. Um, I'll show you another thing when I moderate AI feedback activities. I just need to stop this drawing activity first and we'll move over to my AI feedback activity and I'll start it. I'll move over to the student device and I'll write something just silly. Hi, my name is Heidek. I'll submit it move back to my teacher device and we'll end the activity. And what I showed you previously was that you can click give feedback here. This is what I did after the SCR, right? Everyone wrote their SCR and I can click give feedback. If you open the moderation tool and click generate feedback before you click give feedback, what will happen is that I can read all the feedback before it's sent out to the students. Here I can click retry, but I can also edit it myself. So I can go in here and edit the feedback I give them and 
after I've ver like, like all the feedback here, then I can click give feedback. So this gives you a bit more control about the feedback your students receive. Um, so this, is, this was the first classroom management tool I wanted to show you, the moderation tool. Another one I wanted to show you if I start this activity here is that you, when an activity has started, you can, students can write here, they can view the slides. I'm back on the teacher screen. If you click freeze, this is our digital one, two, three, eyes on me. What happens then is that the timer stops, but also if you look at the student device, I can't, as this student can't write or read any slides, uh, they just see that it's happening on the big screen. So if I try to take away all distractions from the students, so this is a great tool if you want to give uh, some kind of information or, or if something is disturbing you mid-activity. You can click play or unfreeze to start it again. And then another thing that is nice to know is if you want to add more time to an activity, you can always just click at 30 seconds there. So I have exited the lesson, and as promised, I wanted to show you a few ways you can use Curable to support bilingual learners. So the first way is that you can translate your slides. So when you're in the editor, and you scroll down here, you can click Translate. What happens here is that you can set the language your lesson is in, the language you want to translate it to, the slides you want to translate, and then click Translate. And you then get a copy of this in the language you requested. So what's nice with this is how I recommend doing this is if you have bilingual students, you can create one version of your uh, slides where uh, they're in both in English and Spanish. And then you can click share, download as PDF, and then you can send this PDF out to uh, those students. Uh, so they can follow it both in English and Spanish. Another thing that is worth noticing is if you go to an AI feedback activity here, like this number nine, you can click edit activity. And if you click customize, you see the prompt we use to give feedback. You don't need to understand all of this here, but if I scroll down to the bottom and I add always give feedback in English and Spanish, this will now give feedback in English and Spanish, which is very, very worthwhile knowing if you want to be able to give AI feedback in multiple languages. So what I want to do now is I want to again stop it and uh, encourage you to try out the moderation features together, the classroom management tools. So what, sit together in a group and host a lesson and try to start a moderation tool. So try to moderate uh, some of your participants and test out the freeze button and also go in and test out translate uh, and uh, see if you want to change the feedback to Spanish. If you want to practice some more with uh, Spanish support, I also recommend you to test out our full bilingual lesson, which is pre-translated. But also, if you go to test prep made fun, and scroll to the right here, we actually have a telepath customizable lesson as well. So yeah, uh, either practice with the classroom management tools like moderation and freeze, or some of the bilingual supports and just play the video again when you want to continue. Great, I have one more thing to show you, and that is that after uh, you've done lessons in CurePod, you can always click on your report panel here. And in the report panel, you can find all the lessons you've done in CurePod. And we can go into them. So let me see if I can find one here. You can open the lesson here. And in this lesson, uh, you can write in a learning objective. So I'll go, go walk you through it here. So you can see the participation of all of your students. And then you can go into the activities and see all your, their answers. But the really powerful thing is that you can write in the learning objective of this lesson, and then you can cl click Generate Insights. And what Curable does now is that we read all your students' answers through the lesson, and then we summarize their most common understanding and misconceptions. 
So this is a great way for you to get an overview of what your students have learned. You can also go into each student and get this on a student-based level. This is an incredibly powerful thing to do. So this is the end of my course. I really hope you learned something you enjoyed here. Um, the last teacher I spoke to uh, used CurePods for three months before her start practice, and she got the 12th average of 12 points increase per student on all of our uh, RLA stars over three different classes. So really see that this is working. Um, I really recommend you to try it out, both of course in the months before the start prep, but what I really urge you to is just test them once a week. It's such a great way to give your students continuous practice in doing this. So I hope you found something you liked. I hope you reach out in the chat here if you have any questions. Thank you again for everyone on one of my side here helping me host this PD. Uh, I hope you have a great time. I'm traveling around Texas all the time and I hope we get to meet in person. Have a good day and hope to meet you.